Hello, welcome to the Freddie Jones Show. Speak the word only. I'm your host, Reverend Freddie Jones from Hand in Hand Direct Care Ministry Inc. It's a local nonprofit organization based in Bristol, Connecticut. And it is my honor and a privilege for me to have this opportunity to preach and to teach the word of God to the nutmeg television viewing audience. And today, on the broadcast, I will be discussing and talking about kingdom living. Kingdom living, the way that we should carry ourselves and the way that we should act as Christians, as representatives, as representatives of heaven down here on the earth. We should carry ourselves in a certain way. We should be those peculiar people. There are ways that we are supposed to carry ourselves we should be set apart. We, we, we're holy. We're set apart. We are not the same as the world. We are in the world, but we're not of the world. God has his footprint on us. We seal with that seal of promise. We are the children of God. And I'm going to talk about kingdom living here today. And I thank you for joining up my, bro my broadcast. And uh, if you have your Bibles with you, that's great, and if you don't, I'm going to give you a minute or two to go get a Bible or call up a friend or a loved one and let them know that the Freddie Jones show is on, speak the word only, and you know that I'm going to bust open this word and I'm going to go into the Bible. I'm going to read the Bible because uh, the way I preach and the way I teach is uh, Bible-based. It's not, uh, how can I say it, it's not denominational-based, it's Bible-based. Me, myself, I'm non-denominational. I don't have any problems with any denomination. Whatever denomination you are, you're welcome to read along with me. No matter whatever denomination you are, you're welcome to go over the Word of God with me. But me personally, I'm non-denominational. And uh, this is a good time to help someone go get their Bible. And if you have your Bible, get it and bust it open. And we're going to get into the Word. I'm going to be teaching from the book of Matthew through Matthew chapter 7 and I'm going to read Psalms 105 and before we get into all of that I would like to start out with a prayer can you bow your heads and pray with me Father God I come to you this evening in the name of your son Jesus Christ my Lord and my Savior the author and finisher of my faith and I enter into your courts with thanksgiving, and I enter into your gates with praise. I humbly bow down before you and acknowledge you for who you are, not because of what you could do for me, and not because of what you have done for me, but purely because of who you are. I turn myself over to you, Lord Jesus, because of who you are. I bow down before you because of who you are. I surrender to you because of who you are. We do. Me as well as everyone that's underneath the sound of my voice. Father God, we put you in your right place, in your rightful position. And that is the head. And that is the head. And us as Christians, Father God, we are the body of Christ. We are his workmanship down here on this earth. Father God, as we open up the Bible today... As we get into your word today, Father God, let your word bring life in dead situations. Let your word bring light in dark situations. Let your word juvenate the minds of your people. Let your word turn hearts of stone into hearts of flesh. Let people's lives be changed forever for the better because of your love, because of the love of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 And right now, we can just go to the psalm. We can go to Psalms 105. Psalms 105. I kind of cheated to have my Bible flipped over, folded over in Psalms 105. So that's why I'm there so, so easily. Psalms 105 reads as such. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord. Call upon his name. Make known his deeds among the people. Sing unto him, sing psalms unto him. Talk ye of all his wondrous works. Glory you in his holy name. 
Let thy heart of them rejoice that seek the Lord. Seek the Lord and his strength. Seek his face evermore. Remember his marvelous works that he have done. His wonders and the judgments of his mouth. O ye seed of Abraham, his servant, ye children of Jacob, his chosen. He is the Lord our God. His judgments are in all the earth. He have remembered his covenant forever. The word which he commanded to a thousand generations. Which covenant he made with Abraham and his oath unto Isaac. And confirmed the same unto Jacob for a law. And to Israel for an everlasting covenant. Saying unto you will I give the land of Canaan. The lot of your inheritance. When there were but a few men in number, yeah, very few, and strangers in it. When they went from one nation to another, from one kingdom to another people, he suffered no man to do them wrong. Thank you, Jesus, for that. Yeah, he reproved kings for their sake. That's what he do for us as well. That's what he's going to do for us as well. We're his children. We're drafted in. Hallelujah. Saying, touch not mine anointed and do my prophets no harm. Hallelujah. Moreover, he called for a famine upon the land. He broke the whole staff of bread. He sent a man before them, even Joseph, who was sold for a servant, whose feet they hurt with fitters. He was laid in iron until the time that his word came. The word of the Lord tried him. The king sent and loosed him, even the ruler of the people, and let him go free. He made him lord of his house and ruler of all his substance to bind his princes at his pleasure and teach his senators wisdom. Israel also came into Egypt and Jacob sojourned in the land of Ham. And he increased his people greatly and made them stronger than their enemies. He turned their heart to hate his people, to deal subtly with his servants. He sent Moses, his servant, and Aaron, whom he had chosen. They showed his signs among them and wonders in the land of Ham. He sent darkness and made it dark, and they rebelled not against his word. He turned their waters into blood and slew their fish. Their land brought forth frogs in abundance in the chambers of their kings. He spoke, and there came diverse sorts of flies and lice and all of their coats. He gave them hell for rain and flaming fire in their land. He smote their vines also in their fig trees and broke the trees of their coast. He spoke and the locusts came and caterpillars and that without number and did eat up all the herbs in the land and devoured the fruit of the ground. He smote also all the firstborn in their land, the chief of all their strength. He brought them forth also with silver and gold. And there was not one feeble person among their tribes. Hallelujah. Egypt was glad when they departed, for the fear of them fell upon them. He spared, he spread a cloud for a covering and fire to give light in the night. The people asked, and he brought quails and satisfied them with the bread of heaven. He opened the rock, and the waters gushed out. They ran in the dry places like a river, for he remembered his holy promise, and Abraham his servant. And he brought forth his people with joy, and his chosen with gladness, and gave them the lands of the heathen. And they inherited the labor of the people, that they might observe his statutes. And keep his laws. Praise ye the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. That was a pretty good psalm. Psalms 105. Deals with uh, God and the children of Israel. And how when they were slaves in Egypt. How he rose up. Moses to get them out of there. And it also talks about how they got there in the first place. Which was through Joseph. And they were very small in number. But when they wanted to buy, the, the, the Bible says the more they, 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 the more they afflicted them, the more they prospered. The more, that they, the more they grew. The more that they went through, the stronger they became. And the more their numbers grew. 
So that's pretty good about the children of Israel and uh, their history and where they came from and how they started. And now we're going to get ready to get into the lesson for the day, which is in the book of Matthew chapter 7. Matthew chapter 7. Okay, Matthew chapter 7. I'm going to talk about uh, Jesus is talking here. Pretty much the whole chapter is Jesus talking here. See, Jesus wasn't finished yet. He didn't go to the cross yet. He's still here. Or he was still uh, in Matthew chapter 7. He was still on earth. He's still talking to his disciples. He was still laying the foundation. He was still laying down what he wanted us to follow. The laws that he wanted us to follow, the way that he wanted us to live our lives, he was laying down the pattern for us. And he wanted us to be able to pick this up and to carry it forward. Since he wasn't dead yet, there was he was limited in how he can get across to the people. So he was very particular in the words that he said. And this kingdom living is how we should live our lives as Christians. You know, we have to remember that we're, 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 we ain't nothing but dust. God took the dirt from the ground and formed us and breathed his life into us. We're just dust. And when Adam and Eve sinned, the power of God was no longer with us because he cannot be in the presence of sin. Now we were under the curse of sin. So we're, we're just filthy rags. We have to remember that. I know that we're saved now, if you're saved. I know that we're righteous now. But we also have to remember that we're in our flesh. And the Bible says, and our flesh dwells no good thing. Evil continually is what our flesh wants. So we have to, how did Paul say it? Paul said we have to crucify our flesh daily. I'm just trying to stress the importance of living a Christian life in a sinful body. And how it relates to other saints, how we deal with other saints, how we talk to other saints, and also how we deal with the world and how we talk to people in the world. This is that kingdom living that I'm talking about here. Now, we can't skip this. We can't look over this. This is not something that we should just bypass. Because it's not preached on as much or it's not talked about as much. It's not a very, uh, it's not a topic that people are looking forward to. Now I'm going to get ready, to, I'm, now I'm going to get into this. And I want you to go along with me, read over this with me. Matthew chapter 7. Hallelujah. Judge not that you be not judged. For with what judgment you judge, you shall be judged. And with what measure you meet, it shall be measured to you again. Verse 1, judge not that you be not judged. Basically, he's laying down the groundwork of how we should treat people. He's laying down the groundwork of remembering who we are before we make that decision to try to put somebody else down. Remember that who you are, where you came from before you try to Cast something on somebody else. Judge not that you be not judged. But with the same judgment you judge, you shall be judged. And with what measure you meet, it shall be measured to you again. And why I behold of though the mop that is in thy brother's eye, but consider if not the beam that is in your own eye. We're quick to point out another person's flaws. We're quick. To point out another person's uh, disability, uh, as I may say. We're quick to point out where another person is weak at. But we don't have that same energy when it comes to our flaws. Or to when it comes to our own weaknesses. To when it comes to where we miss the mark. So, in order for us to not have the spotlight on us, we point the finger at somebody else. Because I may be suffering with this or I may be struggling with this 
But then, but then I look at this brother over here, and I try to make it seem like what he's doing is worse than what I'm doing, to make myself feel better. So I, so people sometimes have a tendency to feel as if, in order for them to feel good, they have to make somebody else feel bad. That is not a way God want his saints to live. That is not a way to live. I don't want to live if the only way I can feel good is by making someone else feel bad. That's not kingdom living. That's not freedom. That's not Jesus Christ. That's the world. That's the way the world does things. Or how will those say to thy brother, let me pull out the mop out of thine eye, and behold, a beam is in your own eye. You're a hypocrite. First cast out the beam out of thine own eye, and then shall those see clearly to cast out the mop out of thy brother's eye. So we should spend the majority of our time, or all of our time, becoming better Christians ourselves. We shouldn't have the time to be worrying about what somebody else is doing because we're so busy critiquing ourselves. We shouldn't have the time to worry about how another person is developing in Christ or how another person is not developing in Christ or how another person is dealing with their relationship with Christ because we're so busy and, and occupied with how we're dealing with Christ. How our relationship with Christ is, is going. If we spend more time fixing us and less time trying to fix someone else, that'll make our lives more easier. And it would also make it more pleasant for other people to be around us. You know? It's really easy to get pulled into gossip. It's really easy to get pulled into things it seems like a slight thing it doesn't seem like anything that's really hurtful or harmful but what it does it it it, uh, it uh it sneaks up on you before you know it you you're in the middle of a full-blown conversation of making someone else feel bad and and that wasn't even your attention so we have to watch the company that we keep even in church watch the company that you keep if, hey, if you're speaking to a brother or a sister in church, how you doing, brother? How you doing, sister? Okay, and if they begin to go left with it, you have to excuse yourself in a polite in a polite way. Hey, sister, uh, nice to see you, but I have to go. You don't want to be caught up in that church gossip. Gossip is very underrated. People don't look at gossip as being that bad because it doesn't like physically hurt another person but what it does is it, it really tears you down tears your strength down it takes away from your value because you're focusing too much of your energy on the wrong thing and on the wrong people gossip is really bad so people think if you're a liar or if you're a cheat or if you're a whoremonger or all these other things that are may seem really really bad it's bad, but if you just if you're a gossiper, it, it ain't that bad. But it is bad. It is it's really bad, and it's something that we need to clean up. Just because you could quote scripture, doesn't mean that you are a person of love. It, it does. It just doesn't mean that. But sometimes, sometimes, sometimes that's what we think. We think that oh. I'm going to win this person over when they see how much knowledge I have in Christ. Or I'm going to win this person over to, to Jesus Christ when they see how bountiful the blessings of God is. So you're going to have this person looking for the benefits of Jesus Christ instead of Jesus Christ himself. See, so look at me. Look what I have. You can't equate the love of God with things. So you're trying to make people believe that if I come to Christ, I'm going to obtain all of these things. And that's not an approach that we should use. That's not an approach that we should take when, when we're living in this kingdom life. We should be light. The, uh, light is more valuable in darkness. Not around other lights. You know? We can't just sit around people with the same mindset as us. 
with the same belief system at us, shining our lights at each other, shining our lights on each other. We need to take our wisdom, our knowledge, and our understanding of who Jesus is and go into some dark places. That's where our lights will be most effective. But the thing is, how can I show off to my brother or my sister in these dark places? How can I practice how much I know in Christ in these dark places? Be because those dark places is the battlefield. You see, it ain't the comfort of church. It ain't the comfort of being in a, in, in a secure place, you know, where you can uh, sit across the table from someone that thinks the same way you do and you talk about Jesus for 15, 20 minutes spitting iron sharpen of iron, which is true and which is a glorious thing, which is what we need to do. But then after we are sharpening, after we finish sharpening each other, we need to get out there on the field where the people that are dying are. We need to get out there in the field where the people that are suffering are, where they need our help the most. We can't spend all of our time together. We have to go out. The Bible says Jesus sent them out. They stayed with him and he spoke the word to them and he talked to them and then he sent them out. We have to be sent out. And then when we go out, we have to respect people for who they are and where they are. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. When it says right here, give not that which is holy unto the dogs. Don't waste your time trying to beat somebody over the head with the word of God that's not even taking you seriously. They don't even believe in what you're saying. But you're spending all this valuable time trying to convince somebody of something that they don't want to hear. Jesus ain't never tried to convince anybody of who he was. Jesus spoke the word and you take it or you leave it. He just spoke the word. He didn't waste his time. He didn't waste his time trying to convince anyone. So don't throw your pearls before swine. If this person is not picking up on the word, this person not going to the word, wipe the dust off your feet. Go to the next person. Go to the next house, to the next town, or wherever it may be. Don't waste this valuable information on somebody that's not interested. Verse 7, ask, and it shall be given unto you. Seek, and you shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened unto you. For everyone that asks, receives. And he that seeketh, finds. And to him that knocketh, it shall be opened. Ask, and it shall be given unto you. If you want to have a relationship with Jesus Christ, if you want to know the truth, if you're in another religion, not even Christianity, say you're a Muslim or uh, one of the other religions and you you're really seeking the truth if you're really seeking the truth God is gonna give you an avenue he's gonna send somebody your way to give you the truth and even if you're a Christian and what you're being taught is limited you want to go farther in Christ you want to go farther in the Lord if you seek the Lord and tell him that you want more of him He's going to open up avenues and ways for you to learn more. He's going to open up avenues and ways for you to become more educated in the word of God or in the way that he does things, the kingdom of God, how to operate in this kingdom of God. And he's going to make the way available for you. That's what he does. Hallelujah. Or what man is there of you whom if his son asks bread will give him a stone or if he ask a fish will he give him a serpent if you then being evil know how to give good gifts unto your children how much more shall your father which is in heaven give good things to them that ask him basically god wants to give you the desires of your heart he wants to give you things he's saying even if these sinful men know how to give good gifts to their children how much more will God the father of all things give good gifts to you his child that believe in his son how much more would he give to you who ask him we have not because we ask not and then when we ask we ask for the wrong things 
we have to learn how to ask for things in the right way. The right things that will edify this body of Christ and also things that will edify the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. Uh, time is getting low. Um, my time is almost up. So what I'm going to do is. I'm going to get an invitation out right now. To save people. This invitation is there to everyone that's listening to me right now. Underneath the sound of my voice. That is saved. Maybe you just got saved. Or maybe you've been saved for many years. But you just got stagnant. Something happened. You, you got to a certain level in Christ and then you just plateaued. You got to that certain level in Christ and you just stayed right there. You got comfortable right there. But, 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 but now you're seeking more. You want more of who Christ is. You don't want to be in the box anymore. You don't want to put Christ in that little box anymore. You want to let Christ out of the box. You, you want to open up new opportunities for you. New possibilities for you through the gospel, through Jesus Christ. And it can be done. And it can be done. Let's pray to God. Say, God, send someone my way to open up the scriptures for me personally. That's not going to be too deep. That's not going to be over my head. That's not going to try to impress me with my with my elegance, with their elegant speech. But someone is just going to be down to earth. That they give it to me simple. Like they're talking to a child. That I can understand it. Pray to the Lord to put someone in your path that'll unlock that key. Unlock that lock with that key. That'll put you in the position to be able to glean more of the word of God. And give you more understanding of the word of God. So you can apply it to your life. And when you apply it to your life. Your life will begin to change and be better because of it. Because of it. This is for us as saints right here. You know, it's time to, to, to up, raise the bar. Raise our standards. You know, it's time for us to be serious about who we are in Christ. Because if you're in Christ, you're victorious. You're a victor. You're, you're a victor. You're not a victim anymore. You're a victor. Satan is underneath your feet. He's a defeated foe. There's nothing Satan can do to you well, unless he have permission. He's a defeated foe. Christ defeated him. Walk in your possession. Walk in who you are. Walk as a man of God, a woman of God. We are in Christ Jesus. Walk with the authority of Christ. Grow in the Lord. Grow in the Lord. It's time to get off of the milk and to start eating some meat it's time to get on the meat of the word and become a strong soldier in the army of the lord hallelujah hallelujah that is my time for today and uh, i just thank you and i thank you again for uh tuning in to this show and uh let me teach you this word of god and let me every once in a while that spirit to get on me and i start preaching i'm, I'm sitting down but i start going i i go i know i know i go and I just thank you for giving me the opportunity to come into your homes and to speak this word and to keep God first in your lives and to know that all things is possible to him that believe. So before I go, remember to keep Jesus as your anchor and who you hold on to. You can do all things through him. He is the way. He is the truth. And he is the life. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. And amen again. Until the next time.